In this video, we're going to be talking about another one of the acceptable colors for Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Remember, there are four colors um, that are acceptable in the breed. The Blenheim, which is a brown and white. The Tricolor, which is black and white with tan markings. The uh, black and tan, which is, of course, black and tan. And the Ruby. Now, what it says in the breed standard is strikingly brief. All it says in the breed standard for Ruby is that it should be a rich, whole colored red. That's it. So that sounds simple. It's like, okay, video's over, thank you, goodbye. But there's really a lot more to it. Because every Ruby is a solid red, we want to make sure that uh, the, the, the pigment is deep. This is Bella here. Bella is still a youngster. So she has some growth to go and there will, I'm sure, be changes in her coat. She may have some changes in her pigment because of the coat growth. But even now, as a young little puppy here, if you take a look at her side, right along here, She's got a very rich, almost chestnut color. And that's really what we look for. We don't want a faded tan. We want to get that nice, rich pigment. The ears will usually be lighter. I'm not exactly sure why that is. The same thing happens with Blenheims, who have the red-colored ears. Uh, that the ears are usually lighter than the, the uh, red markings on the body. She also, if you take a very close look at the top of her head, you'll see that she's still got, you'll see that she's still got some very light colored, I'm sorry little baby, some very light colored hair on the top of her head, and I'm hoping that will grow out as she gets older. What I've found over the years of attending lots and lots of specialty shows, and for those of you who don't know, a specialty dog show is one where there's just one breed being exhibited. So I go to quite a few Cavalier specialty shows, and we might see 75 or 100 Cavaliers all in the same ring on the same day. Uh, and there will be, of course, a, a fair share of Ruby dogs there. And one of the things I've noticed is that the rubies are probably the most difficult to get a really nice expression. A lot of judges at the dog shows look at the expression on the face. The head with the cavalier is a very important part of the dog and is very characteristic of the breed. And the reason why it's so difficult to get a pleasing expression on the face of a ruby is because they don't have the benefit of the markings that the other colors have. Both the Blenheims and the Tricolors will have white around the muzzle as a little bit of an accent around the nose and the lips. They will have a blaze generally, oh I'm sorry, excuse me little girl. They will have a blaze generally running up the forehead and around to the back, which separates the colors. With a tricolor you'll find black on both sides of that white blaze, and with a blenheim you'll find the reddish tan on both sides of that blaze. Also, you'll find with both tricolors and with black and tans, Right above the eyes, they have a little tan um, eyebrow mark on both eyes, which really helps to add to the expression of the dog. None of these things are present in the ruby. So I think what a lot of breeders who have rubies and produce rubies try to keep in mind is that uh, we want to really focus on a properly uh, constructed head, good shaped skull, nicely proportioned muzzle, a good length of stop, nice round, well spaced, dark, expressive eyes, nicely developed but not overly developed lips, all things that go together to make up a nice head. Oh, I'm sorry, and also the ear set is very important. Where the ears are set on the skull um, helps to give them expression, especially when their expression is peaked by something. 
those ears tend to perk up just a little bit. So that's what we know about rubies. Um, I should also mention that in the breed standard it does say that on whole colored cavaliers, which includes the rubies, uh, white markings are considered a fault. With rubies what you'll find is sometimes the chest will be white. In this case she doesn't have that. And in more extreme cases you'll find white around the muzzle and sometimes you'll even find like the remnant of a Blenheim type blaze. Very thin one going up the forehead. Uh, these are considered faults. It's not the end of the line for the dog. I've seen some beautiful ruby cavaliers that have white chests or at least partially white chests. And if that's the only fault, I mean, there's no perfect dog. No reason in the world why that can't be the winner of the dog show. So, thank you, Bella. You did a good job helping us. Good girl. And thanks, everybody, for listening.